What's up, mortgage coach and trust engine community? I am sitting down with Michelle Castle. Uh, is this the second month you you and your team have closed 21 loans? Is it two months in a row? Two months in a row. Two months in a row. So not a lot of loan officers and teams closing over 21 loans, closing over 20 loans a month in today's market. So first and foremost, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, I've interviewed Michelle a number of times. Uh, she's an incredible leader. You know, she runs a team. She's an entrepreneur, does a lot of amazing things in her local economy. And then you are the, the head coach um, of, is it called Level 4 Coaches? Well, at Guild? Our top producers in Guild. Yeah, that's a fun group. Yeah, and so she's the head coach. So someone that when she talks, people listen. Uh, she's just a great human being. You know, one of the things that I love about the mortgage business is uh, people like Michelle. So Michelle, welcome. I'm looking forward to hearing what you're doing and how you're doing it. Hi. Yeah. You know, I think, Dave, um, we got to get out of our head. You know, words are words are powerful, right? So I think we tend to say this is hard. This is a challenging market. And so we're telling ourselves this is hard. This is a challenging market. So I have um, one of the things that became really important to me a couple months ago is changing the words, listening to the words that we're using and changing those words. And it's, it's changed the outcome just by focusing on the words we choose to use. Does that so make sense? Do, it, it, it does. I mean, easier said than done. And I want to hear what are some of the words that you're saying, like, stop using this word, start using this word. Any, any examples well, you want to give? Yeah. So I just got off the phone with a real estate agent and he's been really battling um, the shift in the market. I mean, cause it affects all of our pocketbooks. It affects our ego. It affects, um, gosh, we look around and, and in some cases we even have fewer people in our offices. So you're looking at this empty space in our offices and it's, and instead of really thinking about what we've lost, I think that we were we were talking about changing just the change of opportunities. Like what opportunities do we see right now that we didn't see before? So for example, he just he just got off the phone with a young couple that's getting married and they're thinking about buying a house next year. So is that, you know, jump in the car, go show them some houses today? No. But it does give us an opportunity right now to have those meaningful conversations, to really connect with people. And so, so I'm grateful. And, and that, that it too is just really one of those changes where I'm grateful to be able to have the time to have these conversations with people that you wouldn't otherwise, because we were so busy just trying to make, make the next buck. So no, it's not easy. And I think the easiest way to catch ourselves saying those words is by listening to others in our office and see what words they're using. And because um, it's just, you know, a bit pausing and, and listening to ourselves as well. I find myself still saying sometimes, this is so hard. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's two things come to mind. First of all, you said the word opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. I, I interviewed Shayla this morning with Jeremy Forcier. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. the word curiosity mm -hmm. came up just so many times, you know, obviously I said it too, but, but you got to be curious and you got to run towards the opportunity. And, and you also need to realize that, you know, life is not easy. Business is not easy. One thing I've noticed that the people that I interview that are having the most success, they're, you know, they're truly excited about the opportunity and the differentiation that they have in this market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the other thing too, Dave, that shifted for me is being more intentional about where I'm spending my time and where I'm spending my energy for conversations. For example, unfortunately, um, when times are tough, you see more divorces, right? It's just, right. It, so So I have been more intentional in, in having conversations with some, uh, with, with divorce attorneys, with people in our community, touching basis with my customers who really might be going through those marital difficulties. 
and being prepared for those conversations as well, or just reaching out to my database and connecting and having good, meaningful conversations that lead to other, again, opportunities um, to have conversations with their friends who also have questions. Would I have had time for all of these opportunities and to, like, to your point, be curious about what's going on in their lives? Had I been so busy? No. So I, you know, again, I think uh, that attitude of gratitude for what we've been giving with this little bit of slowdown that we've experienced has allowed me to find some ways to do business with people that I wouldn't have otherwise. Love, love that. So let's, I, I mean, first of all, we can keep coming back to mindset, um, but I want to, I want to one, give a little yeah. piece of advice that I give myself. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a question mm -hmm. that I ask myself mm -hmm. multiple times a day, you know, and, and I, I, I start it with what if your life was not designed to be comfortable, but designed for growth and innovation? It's so like, that's a question. And then I, and then I always go, what, what would, you know, if that's true, what, what would it be asking you and what would it be giving you? You know, like what, you know, if that was the case, you know, and, and I know for me personally, I always got to remind myself to, to drink more water and it may sound crazy, but when I am killing it with water throughout the day, I'm killing it, you know, and it has to do with sleep. And mm -hmm. when I've got an 80 score on my aura ring and I'm drinking lots of water, like, I just perform better. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Well, probably all people do. Mm -hmm. But so throwing it back to you right now, mm -hmm. I want to I want to ask you this question intentionally. I'm going to repeat myself, and then we're going to do mindset, and then we're going to get into like specific tactics. Yes, specific. But so tactics. first of all, for me, I say, you know, what if your life? What if my life wasn't designed to be comfortable, but designed for growth and innovation? And by the way that just fires me up. Like the word innovation is like a love language to me. What would your worth be? Like, I know growth would be part of it, but what would be the question you'd ask yourself just how you're wired? Cause you're, you know, you, you got, you got a unique way in which you execute. Well, yeah. You know what I've learned um, for me, intentional relationships so um, I have been really assessing who am I doing? How do I want to do business? Who am I doing business with? And um, so growth for me has been not just business growth, but personal growth to the point where if, if I don't feel aligned with somebody, I'm not going to grow well with that person. So um, growth to me lately has been more, um, trimming off the extras that don't feel right and don't allow me to grow. As an example, let me just, I always think of nature whenever I'm, I'm trying to like create the visual for what I'm trying to explain. So I'll use this as my analogy. If I was, um, looking at my landscaping and I'm really looking at my landscaping in my head because it's 120 degrees in Texas. So this totally applies. So Right now, it's hot. We can't water enough for what we have going on in our landscaping. And so you start seeing things dying off because they can't handle the heat. And so, you know, for me, looking at that landscaping, sometimes you have to make the decision to do some trimming before you can expect the shrub to grow, right? And so growth to me also means pausing and reflecting and finding those things that I need to trim and I need to cut back in order to get to a place of growth. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, so so for me, that might be relationships with partners, partners who might be generating referrals in a manner, you know, generating the type of referrals that I just don't do well with. I just don't convert well. So because of that, maybe it's person I like, but I'm not aligned with their business plan. And so, um, so, so it's just, I mean, to me, making, making those types of decisions impact growth for me. And that's uh -huh. really what I've been spending a lot of time reflecting on lately. So, so want everyone just to think about the relationships that you're spending your time building to grow mm -hmm. and go back and audit them from two perspectives. One, 
relationships that give you energy versus relationships that suck your energy. Mm-hmm. I always think, you know, regardless of how successful someone is, if they're a, a relationship sucker versus a relationship grower, then, you know, there's, there's other ways to do it. And then and give them a score one to five, like go through everybody that you're investing in relationships, one to five, five being, you know, they, they, they energize me. I'm like pumped to, mm-hmm. to connect with this person first mm-hmm. and foremost. And then second on a scale of one to five, five being baller in this market, like go check their production, this market, just cause they had killer production in previous markets. Like they are, you know, qualified mm-hmm. for your time. So right. go do that, y'all. And then, Michelle, let's just rift real quick. When you think yeah. of the 21 loans that you and your team are doing right now, mm-hmm. what are what are three to five things that you credit to that um, success that you're having? Uh, staying, follow up, follow up, follow up. So people that are referred to us right now, um, by the time they find a house, it, it's going to be 60 to 90 days. So that chasing new leads is is um is important, but the follow up of what you already have been referred is super important. And then don't forget those people that need you that you've already done business with. So you know, fifty five percent of our business comes from repeat referrals, and and I just um, we can't get so. Um, busy looking for new business that we're not grateful for what we already have. And being grateful is staying in communication, staying connected and sticky with these people. So, so, you know, the quote, the fortune is in the follow-up is, you know, probably never been more important Mm -hmm. because it takes longer for people to get into escrow and under contract and to close. Mm -hmm. It, it takes longer for someone to go from, I want to, sell my home and buy a new home. It takes longer from a first time home buyer to go, you know what? I'm in the market. So what do you, you know, get tactical with me, like break down what is great follow-up, like, you know, like in, in a Michelle Castle way. So we have, we, we stay really close to um, our, as a company, we've been following fanatical prospecting the book. Um, I've never and, heard of that. I've never heard yeah, of that. Yeah. You never heard is of it, that. Is it good? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so by the way, Shayla talked about that you guys, if you're not following Shayla on Instagram, absolutely follow her. She's super inspirational. Follow Michelle and guys, this is a season of fanatical prospecting. So absolutely. get this book. Yeah. So the three, we, I, I have a report that we stay close to. It's a three and seven day report. So on that three and seven day report, every three days, we are going to be following up with whoever referred, um, I mean, to our referral, to who was referred to us. So, you know, we're going to call, text, email. I am really specific about how I want to be referred. I I believe in the triangle of trust. So when I am referred by a financial planner, by a divorce attorney, by a bankruptcy attorney, by a real estate agent, it doesn't matter who the referral is from. It could be, Dave, you're sending me someone from te- that's buying in Texas. I want them to be introduced to me Give them a couple of reasons authentically why you are trusting me with your client, your friend, and then tell me about that person. They're looking at buying, I mean, moving across country. They're pretty nervous about this move. They have several dogs and cats and birds and, and, you know, five children. And this is a really stressful move, but I totally, you know, whatever it is that you heard them say put it in that email. So that customer feels seen and heard. And they also feel confident in trusting me to help them make that move. So I'm very particular about how I'm referred. And then it's, you know, it's the call text email introduction. It's best if I know how they want to be followed up with or how they want to be communicated with. But, and then after that, I'm just going to check in with them every three days until I get an application from them. Making it easy, answering their questions and being just that person providing them all of the information that they need in order to make that decision. And then um, once I have them pre-qualified, we're gonna stay on top of them to get their paperwork, but every seven days, they're no more than seven days they're gonna hear from us. So it's gonna, again, um, be follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. 
We also are big taskers. So within our system, we set tasks. So we know specifically based on this conversation, I'm going to be reaching out tomorrow because I said that I would get this information. I want to be a connector and I want to be a source of information. So it's those tasks also. So I think that is why, um, you know, we can, we can, my goal is 90% of the referrals, we will get an application on right now. We're running a little over 80%. Um, and then our, our lead to pre-approval is at 55%. So 55% of the people that are referred to us, we will get them pre-approved and out house hunting. And I think that that's just all due to that follow-up. Yeah, no. So um, you're one of the top mortgage coaches at, at Gilt, you know, you and your team are. Um, and, and the best practice is every single credit report gets a TCA. And then we're finding, and I'm hearing from a lot of my interviews, that updating that total cost analysis, you know, over time is has never been more valuable, you know, where you're updating interest rates, you're updating down payments. Um, where where does the, you know, what what is your protocol or your best practice for um, when you're within the follow-up and how you you update the TCA? So, so for us, you know, we really are focusing on it right, right now, Texas is going through uh, quite a, a bit of change between our tax reform and our homeowners insurance. So it's trying to stay on top of that so that we can give realistic expectations as people are house hunting, I think is super important. Um, I don't want people falling in love with the house that they did they don't qualify for. So having those questions often and early is really important. Um, so for, for us, that TCA goes out whenever we're finalizing those numbers and going over those numbers in um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, at pre-approval. And then again, at lock and disclosure, continuing to run those numbers and just updating them with the realistic expectations. That part is really important to me. But, uh, you know, Aaron Gordon has a really good tactic that he uses in his area where he is, he is providing a TCA that has as many, he's got five or six different options on there, trying to get their rate, whatever the cost is, in the fives, because statistically, that's what switches in people's mind. I'll buy a house when rates are back in the fives. All right, show them that option. What is it going to cost to get a rate in the fives? Thinking that... Everybody says, buy a house now, refinance later. Well, my concern is who's going to, I mean, are they going to qualify to refinance later? And now I've set them up for this whole mindset. I don't, I don't want to, um, aren't they better off just going ahead and doing a higher, I mean, uh, a permanent buy down now and spending the same amount of money that they would up front by doing a buy now refinance later. Show those options and having that conversation to them, I think is really important right now. And and I want you guys to catch the way she said that with kind of curiosity, no judgment. Uh, you know, a lot of loan officers will sell like, hey, date the rate, marry the house, and you're selling a refi. Mm -hmm. I do think it, it, you could just hear Michelle. She's like, no judgment. Like, what's the permanent buy down? What's the buy down? Give them options with mm -hmm. humility. Show, don't sell, mm -hmm. and help the consumer make an informed decision. And I, I do... Just in the interviews that I've done with you and just your energy, your vibe, you can just tell, like, you're, you're not selling people on strategies. You're showing people strategies. You're helping people make um, authentic decisions that are right for them. Mm -hmm. um, what what else, when you think of follow-up, is there anything? Oh, I know what. What is your follow-up with your agent? So you've gone through, like, hey, I get referred very intentionally by the agent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow up every three days until I get app. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, got relationship and some level of commitment to get app. Then I'm following up every seven days. Mm -hmm. You're updating the TCAs. It makes sense. What's the follow up? They, um, they, get, an up, they get an update every time we we've, we've reached out. I think it's really important that the real estate agents know y'all. How many how many referrals do they get a month? How many transactions do they do a year? I mean, they just trusted you with their paycheck. They trusted you with their livelihood, so they deserve an update whenever you reach out to their to their to their people. So you know, just shoot them a text, give them an email, let them know where you're at. If you're talking about something that's not uh, that's not confidential, CCing them on the email that you're sending out to the client. 
I think it's it's very important that you include them in the conversation because this is a partnership. You just partnered with another professional to help people into a home. So treat it as a partnership. Yeah, no, I love that. So guys, t- hope you're taking notes. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of people are hearing this. And you're like, oh, I've heard this before. My question is, are you doing this? I know every loan officer yeah. is not executing on what Michelle's saying mm-hmm. at a level of excellence. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, where where are you in that process? Also, the I can just tell you right now, I've been doing the training, um, you know, the Mortgage Coach 10X training, which I'm going to make this part of. Mm-hmm. And part of the promise of the 10X training is that we're going to teach you how to get one extra deal this month and do it in a way that scales. So by the way, you just got that from Michelle. Like guarantee if you upgrade your follow-up, um, call, text, email, multi-channel communication, mm-hmm. consistency, you follow this um, at a level 10, you're going to get an extra loan. Absolutely. And then, and, and then did you catch that? Update your realtor with every interaction, you know, in a very cool, simple, on-point way. Like if you, you know, like video is awesome on mobile. But some, I know realtors who like, no, I don't want a video because mm-hmm. then I have to like stop and listen to it and mm-hmm. I prefer text. Mm-hmm. And then you know what? I know a lot of realtors, I want the video. Mm-hmm. So make sure you know what channel they want, how they want, like mm-hmm. make sure you know how they want to communicate, how you want, you want text, you want email, what's better for you. Mm-hmm. And then you just execute on that. Mm-hmm. And then I hope you guys all caught, she said, loop the realtor in, you know, like if it's non-confidential, I'm going to, I'm going to play a little, um, I don't know, 50 second clip. I play this clip a lot right now, but I'm going to play this clip until everyone gets it that looping in the realtor will help you recruit. Absolutely. It helps you recruit realtors. So, so this video, anyone who watches a lot of my content, you know, I've played this Shay Jenkins clip. Have I played this Shay Jenkins clip for you yet? Mm, no. Okay. Oh, and you're going to love it. So Shay is in Denver. Last year was her second year in business. And she her and her team did 53 million. And 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 listen to how she's recruiting realtors by looping realtors in. Check it out. I was going after this huge, 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 one of the top agents in Denver. And I had been trying for, since I was an assistant, I had been trying to get this person. And finally, the poor girl gave me like, you know, gave me a break and was like, Lord, like, here you go, take this one lead. Um, and I took the lead and I did a mortgage coach and I was just like, you know what, why not? I'm going to CC the agent on here. And then that's when the agent picked up the call and she's like, are you serious? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, what mortgage coach? And I was like, you're the top agent. You've never seen this before. And she's like, absolutely not. She's like, this is amazing. She's like, would you be able to do this with all my buyers? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, that's so cool. And again, in her head, I think she was thinking I'm up all night creating this massive presentation with all these numbers and graphs. And, um, she, I got her business and she's one of my top agents now. So, so guys, that's a little, little, little thing, but it's a big, big Mm -hmm. deal. And Mm -hmm. if you did that in the right way, with all of your pre-approvals, you're going to win realtors. And you know what? Like, if you do everything Michelle said, like, oh, I'm going to follow up. Like, she is a, like, part of the, she's an extension of the real estate agent's sales organization. Absolutely. And, and they know that, hey, not only is she going to close loan on time, mm-hmm. has competitive rates, cool mm-hmm. local human being, but, like, when I give it to Michelle, it's going to get followed up on. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to know what's up. And that customer is going to get experience and value beyond typical loan officer. Anything you want to add on to that or any thoughts after watching that video? Um, uh, no, other than, I mean, yes. Um, it's those little things. It's the little things that you do you don't think are a big deal. Like Shay's like, what? TCAs? Like you don't see this from everybody? No, they don't see them from everybody because not that many people are taking their job serious and acting like professionals right now. They're scared. It's hard. And so um, just be consistent doing those little things because those little things is really what matters. And the consistency is what really pays off. 
So I've got a story though. And I was really thinking about this when I was in Denver. You ready for a story, Dave? Bring it. All right. So, you know, we've been really focusing on, on uh, five, our 532. So it's five hours a week prospecting, like a serious commitment to prospect five hours and being really intentional about where you're prospecting and, and what you're saying and, and what you're doing. And then three events. I mean, for me, I double down on the events because I like being an educator and that's just been a way for, that I've built my business. And then two networking events outside of the industry doing fun things that really charges you up, brings you joy, gets you out in the community, put a t-shirt on, put your name tag on, go meet people. Um, so that's, that's really been a focus for us. And I took that. So in February, my husband went to a doctor's appointment and his blood pressure was super high. They kept him at the doctor's office and discovered while they were looking at some old scans, he has this big balloon in his aorta. And it was right above his kidneys. This is like, this is what kills people and they don't even know what killed them until after they're dead. And he's walking around with this aneurysm. So from, I mean, long story short, um, from February to May, my business was autopilot because we had to fix the heart that was in terrible shape, fix the vascular system, which was in terrible shape. I mean, my seeing my husband die several times in the last, well, between February and May. And so obviously my eye was not on the ball. I was not focused on doing business. I was just focused on maintaining. I looked up and here, you know, we're we're done with all the surgeries and, and now we're into rehab and, and he's got this new gift of life. And truly it's a gift of life. And I look up at my business and, you know, I'm thrilled at where I'm at in business, but it's still not enough. I'm not missing President's Club. I'm not missing my goals. Um, although priorities had shifted and changed. So I knew I had to get back to focusing and doubling down on activities. So yes, I have celebrated a great June. I have celebrated a great July. July and August have really been great months for me, but it's because I focused starting in June on really prospecting heavy and hard because I could. Now, there's two things that I learned from that experience. Number one, if I prospect and I am fanatically prospecting and being very intentional about conversations and relationships and connection and conversions and knowing my numbers and all of that, it's the tactics. But I also learned that because there's so much that I do automatically, it's the HomeBot and the messaging from HomeBot and not missing those activity the daily activities once a week and doing those follow-ups. It's the anniversary calls and meeting with my clients and it's the birthdays and the follow-up for the birthdays. I mean, every single birthday, they it's it's automated, but it's still effective. You know, just the throwing the confetti in the air, the bomb bomb video and listing all of the places in town they can go to get something free to go celebrate themselves. Like it's doing all of those things that are automated that still allows people or, you know, helps, has people feeling like they're still connected to me. But so I know it works automatically, but I also know what works and how it works if I get really intentional and serious about my prospecting because of the numbers and the results in the July and August from the activities in the June. In June. So um, to me, it was just a reminder of we got to do the work. We got to do the follow up. We got to do the prospecting, but we also got to do a good job at follow up. Yeah, and I hope everyone is inspired. I don't care who who you are, what level of success you're having. Um, if you just take action on what Michelle has laid out here today, and you do the five three two. But by, by the way, is the two what what are the you know is that five hours per what week three events per week week. week. So you're doing five hours per week. And, and if for anyone that's closing less than, I don't know, three to five loans, like five hours per day. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, like we're talking to someone that's closing 20 loans a year. 
that has incredible. I have dialed in systems that are automated. So I can do five hours of connecting a week and I'm still okay. Had I not had those systems, yes, you better double down. Yeah, you better double down and and call all your your signals, you know, for all you trust engine, sales boomerang clients, like every one of those alerts. Obviously, like I, I talked to someone recently and they said, yeah, really only the listing alerts and the inquiry alerts. Mm-mm. are what are valuable today you know mm-hmm. and i'm like oh. mm. i mean maybe those are the most predictive if someone is you know shopping you yeah they're in the market so call them and Peace. speed and get there fast and, and yeah if they just listen to their home call them but call them with a need say hey i've got some ideas and strategies that will one help you sell your home and two will help you buy your new home and right? call the realtor and call the realtors but, you know, even though the equity alerts are not, um, you know, they're not all in the money right now, like everyone that's got a 2%, a 3%, um, you know, you, you need to be keeping them updated on the market. And remember, you're not in the loan business, you're mm-hmm. in the create wealth right. with real estate mm-hmm. and achieve financial mm-hmm. freedom business. So, so if you call with that spirit, you're not just looking for the next loan. You're looking for, how can I help? Oh, you've got kids that are getting ready to graduate from high school. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let's start talking about how you could help them house hack or buy a duplex or tri- triplex mm-hmm. and pay for college. Yeah. Um, you know, like, oh, let's, how can we use this opportunity? I love the word opportunity, opportunity. to rent out your current home and buy another home, accidental landlord. You're in the, remember we're in that business. And then for all the people that have five, six percent, you should be calling them and letting them know that you got them. Like when rates start to come down, absolutely, I got yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, so you were going to say something. No, I don't even remember what it was. Um, but to your point, it's the connection. It's the conversation that we have to have. More conversations lead to more conversations. But be curious about what's going on in their life. You don't know. I mean, maybe they were thinking about adding on. Maybe they were thinking about, oh my gosh, my I, I need to move my in-laws in the house because they've got some health issues and I don't know where I'm going to put them. I don't know. I mean, you just don't know what kind of solutions you could be providing someone because you're not being curious enough to find out what challenges they have going on, what problems that they have you could possibly solve. Maybe you can't solve them, but you can provide a resource to, to them of somebody that can so I think those conversations are so important and need, I mean, any and all triggers, that's why those trust engine triggers are, are so important. So, so Michelle, um, let's close out. Okay. Anything you Again, I want to solely focus on three things. One, we want this audience who's watching this to get one extra loan in a way that they can 10 exit. Like if you did this one loan this month, one extra realtor and you know, anything you haven't covered that is part of your success, that if they did X or Y or just X, you think that would help them in this market be more successful? Anything else come to mind? A lot of things come to mind. Um, I, I, I think um, this is for all producers at all levels, right? You you pick. You can, you can give some advice to all producers at all levels. You could give some advice to um, new LOs or, you know, struggling LOs, or you could just say, hey, here's a top producer strategy because you are the head coach of all the top producers. Well, so- I, I think I think right now, you know, top producers typically have a database. They have, they have uh, fishing holes to go fishing in. If you're new into the business, you don't have all of those triggers. You don't have all of that database and all of that. I think what's really important is helping, finding out the biggest the, the biggest struggles that I see my realtor partners have right now is getting um, getting homes, um, getting eyeballs on homes. So I think um, right now, if if I were brand new in the business, I would be oh, thinking about. Oh no, you go go with your brand new in the business. Yeah, I was going to say you go top producer. I'll go brand new, but you got an idea. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, I have a brand. I have an idea only because. Um, well, because I, if I had more hours in the day or if I had someone that really wanted to take this idea, I could so help them like bring this into more business. Um, getting people to show. I think that realtors right now in my area more specifically 
are lacking uh, creative ways to get people in homes during open houses, right? Sellers are wanting people to have open houses because they want people to come through their homes and not get the showings they, they expected in this, the, the, the agents have a lot of pressure put on them to get people through the homes. And they're having those open houses and without great except, success. So I think that we as loan officers have a lot of creative ways and we have some resources to help them with their home open house strategy, which could be a totally another call because I have this great idea on how to get people into homes for open houses. But finding out right now, what is your big, your real estate agent's biggest struggle in their business and becoming their best business partner, I think is the best way for you to get business. It's not asking them for referrals, finding out what is it that you need help with and let me figure out how to provide that help for you, whether it's people showing up at open houses, whether it's helping them put it together a follow up plan, whether it is um, social media help, whether whatever it is, I think that um, just getting closer to the realtors and not expecting any business, not asking for business, but asking how you can help them in their business is um, the best way to 10x and get some business. Love, love, love that. So I'm going to share a strategy for new loan officers. Uh, so, so first of all, what I'm going to share with you will not only get you some first-time home buyers, will not only get you a few move-up deals. It'll it'll make you a better like advisor. It will make you more confident. And as Shayla said today, whoever's most confident wins. So, first of all, if you're new, call up every person that you know that rents and say, "Hey, I need your help. I'm you know new in the business," or just Whatever you want to finesse, if you've been in the business for a couple of years, people know you, like you, I need your help. I need to practice a rent versus own analysis. Not here to sell you anything. Mm -hmm. I just need to practice my rent versus own analysis. And here's the deal, guys. Mm -hmm. You do that 20, 30 times, mm -hmm. you're going to get better mm -hmm. in having the rent versus own conversation. By the way, can you hear my dogs? They're going, oh, good. They're going nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways. Uh, you're going to get good at having that conversation and you're going to get some first time home buyers to go, oh my God, I need to move up now. And you're also going to get some that say, oh, I need to buy that house in a year. You're going to, you're going to help people and you're going to get good at it. Mm -hmm. And then call all your homeowner friends and say, I need your help. Mm -hmm. I need to practice mm -hmm. my move up conversation. Mm -hmm. Realtors don't have any listings. I need to get really good at bringing more value to my listing agents. I need to get really valuable at having a better conversation with the family that is in their home during this tight inventory. Will you let me practice on you? Mm -hmm. And then do a total cost analysis, practice. You do that 10, 20, 30 times, you know mm -hmm. what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You're going to get better. You're going to get more confident. Mm -hmm. And you know what else is going to happen? Mm -hmm. You're going to get some leads for your realtor friends. And you're going to get some listings for your realtor friends. It's and you're going to help some families build wealth mm -hmm. with real estate. Mm -hmm. If you just, you got to get out there and, and practice. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so any, any thoughts on that strategy? Yeah, well, and to, and ask them, who else do you know that I can, I can present this information. They've got family and friends that everybody likes. If they like you, they're going to want to help you. So I love that you said, I need your help. Yeah. Because. That would be really rude of them to say, no, I'm not helping you. They're yeah, gonna no, they're, say, no, they're okay. going to help you. They're going to help they're you. They're going to help you. Yeah. 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 And then to your point, you know, Jeremy Forcier's favorite script and best conversion is every person that's in a transaction with him. When they say, thank you, he sends them an email. I need your help. I mm -hmm. want to do more, with more, more business with people I like. Mm -hmm. Do you know of anyone I can help? So, you know, play that script forward. So I'm going to ask you one more question, but before I do, I want to remind everybody, you know, this is interview is like the last couple of days of August of 2023. Who knows? It might go live in our, our YouTube channel. Uh, first couple of days of September. I don't know when this will be live in YouTube, but for the month of August and the month of September, I'm doing this 10X challenge. So you can go to mortgagecoach.com forward slash 10X and and every Tuesday, I'm interviewing someone on specific strategies. 
Uh, and we're going to get this interview um, somehow into our 10x challenge. Um, but I want to make sure you guys know, if you don't have Mortgage Coach, you can sign up right here. You can watch these. Mm -hmm. This will be green in a couple hours because I interviewed Shayla. I, I, I think I have Wally Ilderberry next week. Um, okay. uh, so check it out. Rem there's all kinds of resources to learn how to use Mortgage Coach here. You can sign up for live training. We do live training every day of the week. And then reminder, there's a playlist. So all the long form videos are here. This video that you're watching right now will be in this playlist. Uh, plus we have clips, you know, ranging from, you know, two minutes to seven minutes. And, and just want to remind you all use this speed to need playbook. Like this is a sales training playbook that we're creating for you to help you win with rate shoppers help you create urgency in this market, cost awaiting TCAs. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Mm -hmm. So any last words of wisdom, any closing thoughts before we wrap it? Um, well, yes. Num number one, I just want to go back to your words are powerful. So if you start your day excited about the day, if you pause before every conversation, reminding yourself, what is the goal of this conversation? What is my intention in this conversation? And be way more intentional with those conversations and coming from a place of gratitude because every opportunity we should be grateful for. Um, and just don't, there's power in consistency. So find a plan that works well for you. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be, there are going to be times where it's like, man, I got to make these calls. Just smile and dial and do what, just smile and dial. Once you make a connection and you have a conversation, that's the energy in which will power you to make the next call. And so you don't reach somebody. That's okay. Leave a great message. Follow up with the voicemail, but don't stop prospecting and following up and connecting with people because people need us. You have information. You have ways to help people that they don't even know anything about. But if you're not having a conversation and finding out what they're struggling with or what they're questioning or, or you know, what their biggest concern is, if you're not being curious, you're going to miss the opportunities. So just don't stop. Be consistent with the prospecting. Be consistent with the conversations. Just don't, don't stop. Keep following up. Because it matters. Well, Michelle Castle, thank you so much for jumping in, uh, making time, you know, bringing your unique energy to the market. Uh, how, how far north of Dallas are you? I am... I'm basically Oklahoma border. So I'm about 60, 70 miles from the airport. So wherever you are in Dallas, if you just, yeah, 60, 70 miles. Love it. Well, thank you for everything you do. Hopefully you got value from this. Anyone watching it, if you have not already, make sure you subscribe to the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. Best practices for loan officers. Um, managers use this as a resource to train and motivate and inspire loan officers. And then the Trust Engine YouTube channel, is for leaders. It's innovation for leaders. Make sure you follow both of them. This is a wrap. Thank you so much, Michelle, and everybody have a great day out there.